Hey man, what you up to? Oh, I'm just playing this board game by myself. Ah, two can play at that game. Yes. Two-player board games are some of the most commonly played games in my collection because it's really often quite hard to get a bigger group of people together for a game night. Look, we've been together for so long, shared many resources with each other, and I couldn't bring myself to trade you away, but I think it's time to move on. I want to start something a little more serious. The beauty of a two-player game, however, is that you can either play it one versus one or head-to-head, -head, or you could split into two big teams and verse each other, with each team taking on a different role. In this video, we look at my five favourite next-level, meatier two-player games that probably will tear your relationship in two. And like always, if you really want to see Board Game Sanctuary grow, please make sure you check out my Patreon page, link in the description box below. Wait, what's this? Evolution? I said meaty board games, not games that feature carnivals in them. Nagaraja. Have you ever wanted to run in the shoes of Indiana Jones or dash through a game of Temple Run with your significant other? Well, in Nagaraja, this game pits you head to head as both players race through two different temples, throwing fate sticks and exploring a labyrinth of different pathways as they go. The player who scores 25 victory points first and avoids collecting those uncursed relics will win the game. Across each game of Nagaraja, players will be acquiring Fate Sticks by playing cards with the same icon on it from their hand. Fate Sticks come in three different colours, white, brown and green, and feature either dots which represent Fate Points or a wave which represents Naga. Players are essentially jostling to and fro like some sort of game of tug of war to compete for temple tiles shown. These temple tiles allows players to explore their temple and acquire some juicy treasure. Like some sort of back to the future escapade, players can alter their fate by playing action cards from their hand using any Naga symbols rolled. This might involve adding extra fate points to surprise your opponent, discarding fate sticks thrown by your opponent, moving temple room tiles, placing traps on your opponent's temple, spying on relics or swapping them around, or even drawing extra cards into your hand. The player who rolls the most number of fate points, as represented by these shiny golden dots, at the end of the round wins the temple room tile shown. Brown fate sticks are better at providing players with fate points and help them to gain control of temple room tiles. Green fate sticks on the other hand have more naga symbols on them, allowing players to activate effects on the cards in their hands. Winning a room tile means that you can gain victory points if the pathways you build in your temple lead you to the right relics. Naga Raja essentially pits players head to head by forcing them to bid on certain temple tiles, which is essentially one of the primary ways that a player can navigate and explore their temple, which means each round of the game feels incredibly tense. Surprising your opponent by using action cards from your hand ensures that your opponents remain on their toes, also keeps you on your toes as well. It's like in the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark where that big giant stone temple ball is rolling down into the cavern as uh, Indiana Jones is trying to escape with the idol. I mean, it creates this back and forth effect which makes each move in this game feel incredibly impactful. The theme of this game oozes this Maze Runner-like effect where if you take the wrong path, you might end up uncovering some cursed relics. Your opponent at the same time is trying to throw obstacles in your way, thwarting your attempts at trying to succeed. And if you do find the right path and the most efficient path to the treasure, that's when you'll truly be rewarded. Pachacuna. Pachacuna is a two-player route building game of llama-sized proportions, where players will be traversing the Andes Mountains by transporting different coloured dyes to different villages and trading them in. By building a spectrum of colours, the player who gathers seven different coloured resources first and trades them in will win the game. Across a game of Pachacuna, players will either control a white llama or a black llama and attempt to transport these coloured rods to villages that display these wooden banners, advertising what type of coloured material they want. To access these villages, there are a few caveats. 
Firstly, the White Lama can only travel through the valleys represented by these low grooves. The player who controls the Black Lama can only travel across these black trapezoidal shaped mountains. In addition, at the start of each player's turn, they will rotate a hex tile creating an efficient pathway between the villages. Through these arterial networks and connections, players will be able to try and match larger demands on the banner, gaining two resources to their supply, or one if it matches the one below. Trading four resources will allow players to hire an additional Llama to help them expand their network of routes. Each game of Pachacuna provides players with a maze of various different options. The ever-evolving game board state means that each and every turn, players are attempting to set up an efficient route to a village, which means that they're able to advance and trade their dies and sell them more easily. Your opponent is always there, changing the board as they go, trying to disrupt your best laid routes. So it's really important to have multiple paths to multiple villages planned out two or three steps ahead, preempting what your opponent does on their turn. Collecting the combination of seven different colored dies is incredibly challenging as they constantly appear on different corners of this hexagonal shaped pizza board. Having extra llamas at your disposals provides you with more options, but it also divides where you invest your actions into. I guess this game does provide players with heaps of dilemmas, I mean dilemmas, for players to contend with. I'm here to make a trade. I'll trade you four board games for that. Skulk Hollow. Skulk Hollow is a two-player board game reminiscent of the 90s beat-em-up boss battle games where one player takes on the fox and heroes and the other player takes on some gigantic monstrous guardians. If the heroes can hit the guardian in all of the weak spots and nullify their actions, then the fox and heroes will win. If the guardian can satisfy their unique win condition, then the guardians will win the game. Look at this sick cardboard. Skulk Hollow has players pitting their melee and range skills in a Mortal Kombat style battle to the death. One player selects one of these four impressive guardians and using their deck of cards and monster figure they'll be aiming to satisfy their unique win con outlined on their card. This might be pinging a certain number of heroes into the distance, placing four rune tokens or spreading roots around the game map. The band of fox and heroes will be controlled by the other player who plays cards from a hero deck gaining energy as they do so. They will be deploying a fox leader, knights, archers, rogues, and a sentinel, all with their own unique abilities and attributes. The heroes will be facing their greatest fears as they attempt to leap onto the guardian's body themselves, inflicting damage to them and nullifying their actions. If the heroes can damage all parts of the guardian's body, they'll win the game. The theme of Skulk Hollow is very reminiscent of the PlayStation video game Shadow of the Colossus. There's great variation between the abilities of the fox and heroes themselves, as well as the asymmetrical nature of these very imposing guardians. The combination of the heroes against the different asymmetrical playstyles of each guardian makes for a different gameplay experience each and every time. When you play a game of Skulk Hollow, there is a true sense that the heroes are trying to overcome some of the greatest adversity, whether it be trying to dodge and shoot and attack and navigate the Guardian's body like some sort of Greek god war of battle. And the use of the power cubes helps the heroes to gain bonus actions and an edge over the player who's controlling the Guardians. The player who's controlling these big, powerful boss creatures truly feels like that they are dominating and causing major damage across the kingdom, whether it be flying around as Rapture or spreading tentacles around the kingdom as Tanthos. There's fun to be had by all. Your day is done. So I play an action card from my hand and perform a ranged missile attack. Curious Cargo. Have you ever wanted to start your own roboticized Amazon or eBay online store? Or have you ever wondered what happens when you press the purchase button when you buy the latest and new fandangled board game? Well now that curious world of product manufacturing and parcel delivery service has been transformed into a board game of pipes, trucks and shipping goodness. Throughout a game of Curious Goods, 
players will be attempting to ship two different types of products, these cute turquoise robots and these red supercharged batteries. Players achieve this by constructing pathways using conveyor tiles and connecting the maze of pipes from the machines to the numbered loading docks. Players will draw their machinery from this techno looking bag and placing the tiles onto their area so they lay flat and even on top of each other to create a network of pipes enough to make spaghetti look cool again. Players then play truck cards to start loading their products onto vehicles ready to be shipped off and received by the other player. The twist here is that the trucks come in different lengths and offer different bonuses when filled up completely. Trucks that leave your board then become on the receiving end of your opponent's player's board. So like a Fed Express service, your tangle of pipes not only need to be able to ship the goods, but also receive the goods that are transported your way. For every contiguous pipe connection that is made, players will participate in a tractor race up this turn order track, scoring bonuses along the way. The player who most efficiently creates the best number of connections and ships a diverse range of goods wins. Curious Goods is a super meaty game that has you balancing your options at multiple levels. It's a visual puzzle of trying to connect your blue and red pipes to the delivery and receiving sides of your warehouse. Matching the position of these feeding pipes to the open spots on your delivery trucks and negating the blocked off parts of your truck is truly a logistical nightmare. The game even tactfully allows you to send trucks on your opponent's side, forcing them to deliver goods to your warehouse and thereby inching you closer to your victory. This game is like spaghetti. It gets real tasty when cooked al dente. If you ask me, the options in here definitely taste super meaty. Oh look, a parcel. How curious. Curious indeed. Star Wars Rebellion. Star Wars Rebellion is a complete beast of a game of intergalactic cat and mouse where one player takes on the role of the Rebel Alliance and the other player takes on the role of the entire Galactic Empire. The player who controls the Rebel Alliance has hidden their Rebel base somewhere in the galaxy. Their aim is to try and garner enough political support and influence to eventually overthrow the Empire and thwart their plans. The player representing the Empire, however, has a completely different agenda. Their aim is to try and locate the location of the Rebel Alliance base by building a Death Star and destroying planets as they go. They'll send in Imperial troops as well as executing their tyrannical plans. Whichever sides achieve their goal first in this intergalactic tug of war will win the game. Now it's time to use the board game force. Across an epic game of Star Wars Rebellion, the Rebel Alliance player will determine a secret planet in which they will hide their Rebel base from the opposing player using this deck of probe cards. The planet selected is placed face down on the location space and this represents where the Rebels are hiding out. Across each round, each player will assign leaders that will embark on missions that represent pivotal moments from episodes 4 to 6. This might involve stealing the Death Star plans or even sending Luke Skywalker to seek the help of Yoda to become a Jedi. Players are going to resolve missions and engage in fierce combat to determine who has control over certain planetary systems. Certain missions can only be completed by certain characters as defined by the mission skill requirements on the mission cards played. Players can send their leaders in political face-offs in an attempt to stop the other player from successfully completing their mission. This occurs through dice rolls and comparing skill icons from the leaders that are facing off. Look, I wouldn't mess with Darth Vader, he has a strength level of 3. Certain planetary systems in the game are influenced by either the Rebel Alliance or the Galactic Empire. Players who activate a planetary system can move their units into that system which can cause some really super tense Star Wars battles to occur. Combat occurs when these light tan plastic toy things battle these other ominous grey looking toy things. You know, just the run of the mill Star Destroyers and Death Stars. Players can use their leader's attributes to help them draw space tactic cards which helps them with aerial assaults and ground assaults. They're secret action cards that will help them to negate and initiate attacks. 
Players then roll combat dice to determine what damage occurs and when the certain tactic cards can be played during the battle. If the Galactic Empire ever sends ground troops onto a planet in a system where the Rebels have positioned their base, then the Rebels' secret hiding spot is revealed. And the climax of the Star Wars trilogy comes to its momentous conclusion. Star Wars Rebellion is a board game that truly evokes the sense that you're playing the original Star Wars trilogy. Scattered within the mission cards themselves are flecks of specific events taken from the films themselves. So it really has players feel like that they're actually reliving and re-experiencing some of the famous events in those films that made those movies amazing. The ensemble of leader characters that players have at their disposal resonates with the immense tension that arises from the conflict that the game evokes. The idea that the rebels have hidden their base somewhere on this map and the swarming nature of the Galactic Empire coming through and swarming the map with their forces trying to locate this hidden base really creates a huge amount of suspense. Not to mention that the uh, Galactic Empire player has an access to a Death Star that can destroy entire planets in the game. This game truly encompasses what a really good Star Wars game should feel like, especially if you're a fan of the original movies. Despite its long playtime, once you have really worked out the rules of this game, each time you come back to it, this game definitely feels like you are fighting out an all-out war. I hope these five board games have provided you an extra insight into some Meteor 2 player games you can add to your board game collection because they are definitely next level. Now if you really like this video, please make sure you check out my Patreon page and thank you to all the people who already support me on Patreon. Really, really appreciate it. If you really like this video, please make sure you like, subscribe and share and maybe play or suggest a board game or two in the comments below. I'd love to hear your favourite two-player board game. I hope that your next board gaming session is a memorable one. This is Danny Sanya. See you guys soon. Goodbye.